Last Christmas, I gave you a 3D tutorial in After Effects, and the very next day, I received 9 dislikes. So today, in the spirit of Christmas, I'm gonna take you guys through my process of how I create that promo video that I use, actually, to promote my last tutorial. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. I think so far, I'm the only one who's brave and generous enough to do something like this. Well, anyways, let's get into it. Alright, so as usual, we're gonna start out creating a new composition. Uh, we're gonna try and make it a square this time. I'm gonna do the basic uh, 1080 by 1080. Probably drop this down to maybe 10 second animation. Boom. And now, right, so the next step is actually trying to find something that you can work on this tutorial with. For example, for me, I already got this uh, sort of PNG image of the Adobe After Effects icon. But, you know, you can do this with anything that you want, like, like the last video. You can do this with um, SVG vector files, or you can try to find some PNG like this with uh, some sort of transparency in the background. So the first thing that we're going to do is to set up our background. So what I'm going to do is head over to layer, new, solid, we just call this BG for background. Uh, everything else looks fine, you don't need, don't need to mess around with the color. Hit OK, and over here, the, the effect and preset tab, uh, type in gradient, um, add the gradient ram effect over here to the background. And then we get these two handles over here for the uh, two colors of the gradient. I'm just gonna drag this one out further a little bit and the end color i'm gonna take that and pick the color around here since you know that's gonna give us a really nice color for the background get that really um futuristic vibe over here next up uh for the background i'm gonna create a new layer solid i'm gonna call it grid again uh in the effects and preset panel i'm gonna find the grid um effect down here under generate drag the grid effect to that grid layer and then we're gonna get a setup of grid uh, you can change the uh, border size right now i'm just gonna put it to like maybe three uh anyway the effects will automatically create a you know a, a grid with proportionally perfect square for us if you want to create a uh, a grid that is to your liking but also maintain the same sort of proportion you can just take either take this handle here and try and drag it like diagonally like this manually or you can you know just add or take away uh, each of these um, values over here inside of the corner property. So let's say maybe like minus 20 over here. And I'll add a another minus 20 inside of that value as well. And there you go. For this uh, grid over here, I'm gonna change the blending mode to soft light. And then we're gonna pretty good blend of the white of the grid to the background over here. Kind of want this grid over here to you know peek out a little bit outside of the black so i'm gonna drag this uh black value up until we can slightly just you know just slightly see till we can just you know see out that grid layer uh one thing we're gonna do before we move on is that we're gonna turn the grid layer into a 3d layer in hindsight this move was not applicable since cinema 4d renderer does not allow layers to have their own blending mode uh, therefore, you should not turn the grid 3D, as this move is known in the industry as a massive waste of time. Right, so we can now finally get to the more exciting part. We're gonna turn this logo 3D. And if you remember from my last video, using extrusion, we can actually extrude out vector and 3D path inside of After Effects. But if we're dealing with like a PNG uh, picture like this, uh, the best thing you're gonna have to do is, you know, trace back the outline of the shape, maybe using Illustrator. Because of how simple the outline of this, you know, this logo is, I'm gonna try and do it in straight in after effects just gonna hide the grid in the background a little bit over here uh head over to layer create a new shape layer i'm gonna click and hold onto this tool and I'm, I'm gonna navigate to the rounded rectangle tool over here and while in the shape layer one over here i'm gonna hold shift and double click on the on the rounded rectangular shape and it's gonna create a uh, perfect uh, rounded square. And then, you know, all you're gonna do is, you know, drag it down, drag the size down, and try to line it up uh, squarely with the original logo that we had. I'm just gonna call this one 3D back. 
Oh, uh, that reminds me, I need to name my comp. I'm gonna call this main comp. I think Ben Marriott is watching me. So what I'm gonna do is click on this 3D back layer over here and hit T on my keyboard. Uh, that's gonna give me the option to change the opacity of the layer. So I'm gonna drop it down. So I'm gonna get a better look at where I'm going with this adjustment. So I'm gonna go to content, rectangle, and inside of the rectangle path over here, and click the constraint proportions over here. Thank you for the pop-up. And then drag it down just a smidge. I think I also need to drag out the horizontal side as well a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And then in the roundness option, I'm gonna round up the corner, you know, until they sort of touch each other. Really nice, okay. You can spend as much time as you want, depending on how complex your shape is, but right now I'm just gonna use this. And also I'm gonna take the uh, fill over here of the shape, do the color pick again from the original logo, and then enable the 3D back. I'm gonna put it behind my picture. And also to begin setting these up as 3D objects, I'm gonna engage the 3D option for both of these layers over here. And for the 3D back, I'm gonna hit P to turn up the position. And in here, I'm just gonna push it back slightly into Z space. So I'm gonna just type in 0.01. And I'm gonna switch to this um, orb, orbit around cursor. What? Okay, yeah, I'm gonna shift and I'm gonna rotate around the shape a little bit without, you know, without touching the camera at all. Before you do all that, you need to switch from classic 3D render to Cinema 4D. And that's gonna help engaging the um, the extrusion option for our uh, shape layer. And here I'm gonna drop down the geometry option, and underneath there you're gonna find the extrusion depth. Uh, so now what you're gonna wanna do is drag it out, maybe to like 200 pixels, like that. Next, what I'm gonna do is create a new null object. I'm gonna call this 3D control. Also turn the null into 3D. Click on the null, hit P, and it's gonna turn up the uh, position uh, property. Now we're gonna want the position of the null to be in the center of the uh, 3D object. In 2D space, it's already in the middle as default, but right now we're gonna need to put it in the middle of the object in D space. So what we did just back then was extruding the shape out to 200 pixels. So what we're gonna do now is pushing this out to 100 pixels. So that's gonna make sure the null stays in the middle of the object over here. And the rest is just, you know, parenting these two shapes into that null. And now we have completed our 3D shape over here in After Effects. Kind of want to color this a uh, different hue to make it easier to look. There we go, something like that. We're going to mess with the lighting later. That shouldn't change too much of how the final object should look, but we can always go back and change it around. Right. Okay, I'm going to re-enable. Wow. All right. All right, so what I've just realized over here is that um, apparently the Cinema 4D renderer does not allow you to uh, adjust blending mode between layers. So no matter, actually, uh, uh, what I'm gonna just gonna do is just revert back to what I actually did in the promo video. You know, this one I just trying to went on to see if I can find a different route, but apparently not. What we're gonna do is take all of these layer over here and put them inside of a composition. Call them main 3D shape. 3D shape. This is actually better actually this. I'm just gonna try and revert things back to where it was. So the grid layer over here, I'm just gonna disable the uh, 3 option for it. And now, boom, my, uh, my soft light blending mode has returned. Also, I kind of want to copy this uh, PNG over here onto outside into the main comp and also, you know, disable the 3D option for it as well. That's going to be where we uh, where we start out with the animation. And so we can begin to animate, which should be fun. We're going to start out with this logo over here. Hit S to drop down the scale. I'm going to drop it down to maybe over here 35 percent looking nice and here and uh, probably the one second mark uh, hit Control shift d to cut it out into two parts just gonna delete this one and drag the main 3d shape over here also make sure it's the starting point of the 3d shape comp which you can tell by a little marker on the top of the bar 
Now we're gonna start to lay down some keyframes. So okay, here in the scale uh, property, I'm gonna hit the stopwatch uh, icon, put a keyframe on there, and in the one close to one second mark, I'm gonna drop it down to maybe a uh, 13 like that. Let's see how it looks. And then I'll highlight this keyframe over here, press F9 and jump into the graph. Make sure the speed uh, goes down really quickly. I want it to sort of ease, in, ease into the transformation a little bit, like that. That's looking really nice. And so over here at the one second mark, this is where the uh, beginning of the uh, 3D animation is gonna be. So I'm gonna drag the final keyframe over here of that of that animation down here maybe dragged out we're gonna need need a little bit of space over here again hit Control shift d cut that piece out and Control x to cut it from the comp and then over here in the main 3d shape comp i'm gonna Control v to paste it back over here and that's just gonna give us a sort of um where to look in terms of trying to line up uh the 3d shape with the logo and the outside comp so right now what i'm gonna do is head over to layer create a new camera and i'm gonna stick to the one node setup over here and preset is gonna be 200 millimeters and we're gonna try and base our 3d shape which is one the one on the outside over here to the scale of this logo i'm gonna head over here to the best position option from the null control and then drag it all the way up like that that's gonna be where the starting point of the logo is if you get to this point over here where you know the two edges just sort of blend to each other just go to the effects and preset head over to fill take this fill effect over here and put it onto the png and then you know it's got that uh, clean border over there for you to guide your eyes onto should be where it's starting right clicking over here to talk all the uh, transparency of the comp by the way this uh, little logo over here and yeah i think somewhere like this should be fine that's good okay so now going from this to this should be a pretty smooth uh, feeling. Now that the 3D shape starts from that size, we can start to animate from there. So using the 3D, con 3D control, I'm going to keyframe the position X, Y and Z rotation while selecting the uh, null control over here, hit U to bring up all the keyframes. So uh, starting from these uh, position, I'm going to drag it up to maybe half a second over here, maybe even more and drag the position inwards. So I kind of want to try and get the logo to, sorry, get the object to hit the screen at really fast speed. So maybe around here, uh, press F9 and then drag that speed in. Still a bit too slow for my taste. Let's see how that looks on the outside. Yeah, still a bit slow. I might want to get it to go a little bit quicker. So I'm going to drag the speed graph in a little bit more. Right. So next, I kind of want a, the object to, you know, uh, finish by drifting slightly into the screen a little bit more. You know, for example, maybe it's in a, a vacuum space and there's no gravity. So over here at roughly five seconds, I'm going to drag the uh, parameter down maybe to minus 300 over here and i'm gonna jump into the graph editor over here and you know what we're gonna do is just trying to make sure this line over here doesn't reach zero which is like a zero value of speed when the object gets to this keyframe it's gonna stop for a little bit before it continues to drift into the screen and we don't want that so we're gonna try and lift this line over here up a little bit also we kind of don't want this to ease in so much at the end over here so i'll make sure to drag this in as well and also make sure that this is a smooth line coming in to this object now let's watch it back again there we go we got our uh, we got our slight drift into the screen which is what we're looking for i'm just gonna drag this in a little bit more and just further finessing the uh, speed line. Right, next we're gonna move on to the rotation parameters. Actually, if you remember in the uh, original uh, animation that we had, the logo actually comes up and then rot uh, rotate a few times horizontally before it lands in the screen. So yeah, we're gonna try and mimic that using the Y rotation. 
Right, so uh, dragging the timeline indicator to the position where the logo sort of, sort of lands in the screen. I'm gonna drag the Y rotation to the left over here for maybe one or two rolls. Let's try two first and see how it looks. Press F9 while on this keyframe, jump into the graph editor and boom, drag it in and see how it goes. Um, I think that's a little bit too much. I'm gonna take it, maybe just take it down to only one roll. Number minus two over here, I'm gonna take that down to only minus one and see how that looks. Yeah, it looked cleaner, not cleaner, but that that roll is way more way more decipherable. And I'm gonna offset the um, offset the finishing of the rotation to the finishing of the position. Also, I'm gonna make sure the Y rotation here gets the same treat treatment as the position. So over here, down here, gonna make sure it drifts a little bit as well, like that, to maybe minus. 45. Same goes with the X rotation over here. At this position, I kind of want it to be offset a little bit, so it's kind of tilted upwards like that. Uh, again, F9, uh, drag that speed in, make sure it speeds up at the beginning, and offset it by a little bit. Also, a little bit to the Y rotation as well. Same goes for the Z rotation. Just gonna have the finishing position be a little bit like this, so you know. Uh, also press F9 and then drag the speed in like that and maybe offset it to the furthest. The next few steps consist of me giving the rotation some extra movement at the end to ensure a little bit of drifting to the screen uh, like I did with the position. And just like with the position, uh, in the graph editor, I try to make sure that the speed lines connect smoothly from one state to the other. And that's what happens when, when it touches the uh, touches the zero line and goes negative. Yeah, so you know, make sure it doesn't go beyond that zero line. Maybe just ease up on the you know on the curve a little bit here. If you drag this all the way to the end, it should be like a like a smooth descent or like a smooth ascent to the final position over here. There should be no curve curvature in the speed line. And now it's you know it's all down to you know adjusting how these parameters look. Uh, I kind of think that this logo over here it's kind of hiding a little bit too much of the actual icon before it rotates away. So I'm just gonna adjust the uh, rotation a little bit. Maybe just uh, have it end up over here. And as for the X rotation, I'm gonna drop it down a little bit like that so that you know. Actually, I'm not gonna offset these keyframes way too drastic. I'm just gonna line them up together. Okay, cool. And let's watch it back in the outside comp. Next over here, I'm gonna adjust a few things. The grid layer over here, I kind of wanted to scale down a little bit. I'm just gonna keyframe this corner parameter over here. So right here, I can see this square. I'm trying to make sure it's sort of attached to the, this edge over here of the logo. As you know, as it's shrinking down right here, I'm gonna take this a value down. I'm gonna drop it down even more. 1592 over here and copy that value. Paste it on O2 over here and also press F9 for this keyframe. Trying to match, you know, trying to match the two speed curves of these properties as much as possible. This one over here seems like it's gradually speeding up over here, so I'm gonna mimic that over here as well. And it seems like the curve over here reaches the peak on to the left of the time indicator, so I'm gonna drag this back over here, yeah, and try to mimic that result. We can try making the grid sort of drift as well. Uh, click onto this value value over here, maybe minus uh, 20. That's good. And also this one, put a minus 20 on it as well. You know, just trying to make sure these two are these two values over here are equal. I'm gonna do a plus 10 on this, making sure making sure we don't have such a drastic drift away. I don't want to take the attention away too much from the main object. And that's good. That's good enough. Wow. Now we get to the part where we get to put design into motion design. So now I'm going to start off with uh, over here the main uh, PNG footage. I'm going to pre-compose it, but 
while doing that i'm gonna click on the leave all attributes in the original comp and what that does is that it's gonna put our png file into its own comp while on the outside the comp is gonna retain all of the uh, all the settings that we had for that layer including the uh, 3d option and also what it is uh, parented to so what i'm gonna do is head over to this layer right click on it and do a little bit of uh, adjustment to the layer style put on a little bit of inner shadows make sure it's in overlay uh drag the distance out maybe still a little bit too harsh on it you know the, these uh shadows and highlights they don't really necessarily have to make sense it's just something that you know try to make it look as interesting as possible in this case that's looking good i'm also gonna add in a little bit of a bevel and emboss first thing first i'm gonna drag up the size and change the angle to make sure the highlight stays somewhere on the top right over here like that um i won't bore you with the details but here are my final figures uh for the bevel and emboss you know make sure to adjust it based on how complex your object is looking but this is what is working for me um, what is important is make sure to keep the highlight blending mode as a color dodge. That's gonna give us a pretty, you know, pretty ominous, pretty techy vibe going on for the highlight. Bam. Okay. Now we come to the part where we start start to add some some custom After Effects lighting into the scene, like this. Head it over to the layer and create some new lights. For this example, I'm just gonna use point lights. A uh, white intensity all works. Hit OK, and then I'm going to drag this one to the top over here. Let's drag the scene out to where it's sort of finish. Drag it up to the top left. Hit T to bring up the intensity. I'm going to bring this out right here. Try giving it a sort of a highlight, soft highlight over here. Duplicate that point light, drag it to this side to the right and drag it out into the z space so we just get slightly a like a hint of it on the on the right over here oh it gets slightly darker okay gonna drag it out like that how about that also bringing the intensity up a little bit that's some smooth light okay there we go we got some light on that end uh this one this one actually we can bring it down a smidge just a little that nice i, I want i want to bring out a little bit of that nice purple over here but then duplicate this point light over here last one gonna bring it down so that we get some of that uh light at the bottom Ooh, hoo, hoo. i i love this part it's like therapeutic maybe maybe the bottom light doesn't have to be as harsh you can actually drag it down to even 67 so sticking with uh the topic of lightings as you can see over here the first frame uh and the the logo is sort of overblown because of all the you know of all the lights pointing its way so what i'm gonna do is just sort of drop the intensity of all the lights down a little bit so i'm gonna keyframe all of these values and i'm gonna drag them to the point where you know the logo sort of finish is movement and at the beginning over here drop all the lights down to to a more you know a more reasonable reasonable amount so that the logo over here uh sort of resembles what the other logo uh in the main com ends up with it's maybe only a couple of frames but you know if we leave it to be so overblown in the first few seconds it's gonna be way more noticeable than having them sort of blend in like this so that they can transit smoothly between one another uh next up if you see in the video over here in the middle part uh there appears to be some flickering edge lights going on over here and you know i was inspired by how the edges of the 3d box over here looks so i tried to create that but you know using 3d shape layers so we're gonna try and um replicate that i'm gonna click over here go to layer create a new shape layer and i'm gonna use the rectangle tool just gonna double click on that on the shape and then i'm gonna change the fill to a full white uh drop down the rectangle path 
unclick the uh, constraint proportions and drop the size of this down maybe like 10 and uh, activate the 3d layer for this uh, specific stick i'm gonna take a look at what the rotational properties of the nulls are looking like duplicate that into the uh, or into the rotation over here so this one goes minus 30.2 this one is uh, minus 26 and this one over here is minus 28 so this stick uh, right now has the exact rotational properties of the shape over here i'm gonna drag this stick upwards to where you know it can get sort of outside of the bound of the shape should be right there and then i'm gonna drag the x-axis to the edge of this shape it should be right there okay drop down the rectangle path i'm gonna make it make it a little bit uh, thinner maybe half of this value and drag it down from the middle like that Maybe drag the position down as well. And then what I'm going to do is parent this to the 3D control null. And then finally, we can see that the stick has uh, stuck to the shape. <laughs> but right now, I think the stick should be somewhere around here based on the outline of the 3D shapes. I'm going to drag it out to that side. There we go. This is really helpful, by the way. The PNG outlines. Go ahead, click on this open T and then I'm gonna drag the boundaries of this layer in just start somewhere around here uh, hit the keyframe opacity 100 uh, hit page down to move up a frame drag this down what I'm doing right now is making a glitch effect so I'm gonna fluctuate the uh, opacity amount a little bit so then uh, 51 then it's gonna end up here at 100 so we get a you know a flickering neon light when it comes up and then over here it's gonna do the same thing and flicker away so i'm gonna copy this setup of keyframes over here copy it to this side of the end keyframe over here Control shift d layer to cut it off there we go uh next i just went on and duplicated this one stick to the other corners of the 3d object uh, you know, using various parameters such as copying the size of the shape into the position as well as rotating them around the axis. What I would suggest uh, using is a script that's called move anchor point over here. Basically, you can use that script to move your anchor point down to these various areas. And uh, what I would do is click on this to move your anchor point to the bottom and then drop the uh, rotation value and rotate it. 90 degree clockwise or you know just click on the amount and hit plus 90 for the smaller ones going out into the space i rotated them using the rotation tool and made sure they are not affected by any lights by turning off the light receiving option as well as bringing up the diffusion up to a maximum finally i offset the appearance of each of the stick in no particular order in order to ensure a more randomized and interesting display. I love this stuff. I love doing glitches. <laughs> and finally, we get to the part where we add in some window dressing elements. A little bit of a light ray behind the logo animation. So how I achieved that was, you know, using a simple shape layer. Draw like a small edge light, you know, just uh, tracing around the logo a little bit. Uh, I just give it the color of this uh, light purple inside of the logo and, I, and then I parent that with the original picture of the logo so then when it scales down the element behind also scales down as well and I'm gonna give that uh, element a little bit of a glow actually I'm gonna give it two glows actually one is this uh, edge a little small edge over here behind and then I'm gonna duplicate that I'm gonna give it a second glow that is gonna be a uh, lighter and spans out in a wider area and then i'm gonna give it a little bit of a fast box blur and then put it on top of every single one of the glow and just blur it out really really lightly and then give it sort of a fascinating blending mode this looks fun but it doesn't it's not giving me much right now something like that 
Gonna drop the threshold a little bit more. Try and put some over here as well. There we go, something like that. But I'm gonna animate that so that it becomes sort of a light ray uh, effect that spans out. So I'm gonna drop it down to the path option over here. Keyframe that path option. And then at the next few frame, I'm gonna draw it out so that it looks like a ray being shot out. Like <laughs> there's something like that. And then also I uh, obviously F9 that, put it down over here so that it speeds up drastically. Boom, like that. And then while it's doing that, it's also gonna fade away. Go down to transform, keyframe the opacity. And over here, I'm gonna pull it down to zero. Might as, might as well pull this keyframe over here further out the side. Nice, and then uh, I also want to blur it up a little bit more as it uh, as it is going away. Uh, put a keyframe on the blur radius, and then at the end over here, turn the blur way up like that. Still keeping a little bit of that cylindrical shape, so I'm gonna try and uh, and make them some sharper edges by adjusting the shape of the path. There we go, and yeah, just. A little couple of uh, maybe um, motion elements like something like a, a star over here I'm gonna double click on the star and what I'm gonna do is turn the poly star onto a four points arrangement over here um, drag the inner roundness in drag the inner radius in as well and then navigate to the transform effect Skew it a little bit like that and then rotate it. I really like the style. I think this is uh, one of the best simple motion uh, language, which is like a simple uh, twinkling star shape. I'm gonna put it in the center over here and I'm gonna animate it out. Drag the star in, put a keyframe onto the position in the next few frames over here, put it out the side. And also, you know, make sure to jump into the speed grab and drag the speed in, speed in as well. Have it ease in over here. Have it fade out using the opacity property. Man, I'm losing my voice. And yeah, actually, I can actually give it a little bit more time. Oh, what the hell? Just give it a deep glow. Oh my God, look at that. It just looks nice. It looks way nicer. There we go. And then I'm gonna call this point line star. Duplicate that and hit U to review all the keyframe. And then for this one, I'm just gonna set the, the final position to be somewhere around uh, here on the opposite side of the composition. So I can have them fly out into opposite sides. Gonna make it look like it's, you know, it's being shot out using some sort of magical force. I love that. <laughs> I think we can move on to some final touches. Usually I just put a new adjustment layer on top of everything and add in a chromatic. Oh, sorry. Yeah, for this one, I'm going to use the one coming from Sapphire. Um, just going to slap like a little bit of a chroma effect on top of everything looking nice especially for these you know these uh white um sticks over here when they're full on white like that when you separate out all the color all the dimensions it uh, looks really cool and then for the final final touches grains add in a simple grain for the viewing mode you can uh, change it from preview to final output and there's a tons of preset of grains you can use actually like uh, the Kodak Vision 250D over here, uh, especially when it's uh, mixed in with the blue, I think it's coming out really nice. And look at look at how it's mixing with the glow, my God. So yeah, this is uh, our final result for the video. Uh, I actually like this final product a lot. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope it has been fun to watch, not usually the case for tutorials anyway. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful Christmas. Happy holidays wherever you are. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the new year. Bye bye.